So, we are a couple of days removed from the end of DNF Dual Open Beta 2. Gonna give my review, and you can probably tell by the title of this video that there's gonna be a lot more focus on one particular aspect of the beta than others, but regardless, let's just dive right into it. I'm gonna start with my overall feelings about a couple of random things, like for instance, I don't wanna get too much into this, but I have to pretty much address it, I feel. I still find it strange that there is no PC beta, seeing that the original IP of this game, DFO, actually started out on PC. And yeah, yeah, something, something, copyright, something, something, data mining, blah, 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 blah. I get it, but come on now. I am not a fan of penalizing a portion of an audience over what a couple of people will do. You know it's gonna happen, why not spoiler proof the beta? Put some dummy files in there, aka like red earrings or whatever. Do something like that. Now I know on the other hand that crack proofing is a little bit difficult and intensive, but I just don't like the idea of excluding a portion of the audience. Another reason why I'm talking so much about this is because I feel if KOF 15 had actually done a PC beta, we wouldn't have had people hacking the game and taking Gotomo Raga and Reverse online and playing them in ranked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just still think it's funny that someone used the broken SNK bosses in a ranked match and still got beat. That will always be funny. Moving on, DNF Duel is still a fun fighting game to me. Despite certain matchups frustrating me, but that comes with the fall with fighting games. You're gonna have those matchups you love and those that you hate. In a joking manner and sometimes in frustration, I've mentioned that certain characters are broken and need to be nerfed, but I don't think I'm qualified to really say that. Who knows how they'll balance it. I think a balance patch came with this, but yeah, I still had fun. I still had hella fun. I can't wait to pick this game up. I can't wait to see what it has in terms of like single player content, I'm really hoping for a story mode. They've got to know that there are people like me that like this game that don't know anything about the original IP. And there are so many cool characters and design and concepts in the way they play, I'd really love to know more about where their powers come from. What are the rivalries here? I can't wait, I'm really hoping for it, and I'm confident they will because Arxis has their hand in it, and Arxis, as I always say, <laughs> They always tend to be very extra with their single player content. Moving right along, another point against the beta is that there were way too many random disconnects. And before you come at me, I know that this is the very thing, at least one of them, that the beta is meant to be for. I get it. However, maybe it was just me, but it seemed like there were many more random disconnects than the first beta. Now, granted, one day I did have some internet issues when I was streaming the beta. A couple of you in here that follow me actually can attest to that. But after I got it fixed up, everything was running better, still getting random disconnects. And at times, and I know other people have had this feeling, I didn't want to make it seem like I was the one rage quitting because no one wants to appear that they are a rage quitter one way or another because if you've played the beta, I'm pretty sure you've experienced this, you're literally about to win the match and then you get booted out of the lobby. It's like, why would you rage quit when you're about to win? which I chalk up to server issues because there were some legitimate rage quits. I've actually witnessed a few, whether it was me or whether it was Speed King because the man plays a really boss Inquisitor. <laughs> I've seen it. But yeah, I'm fairly confident that they'll have this fixed up by the time the game comes out. I'm glad they've done two betas because imagine if DNF Duel came out People bought the full on game and it just so happened to have the same day one disaster that beta one had. That would be heartbreaking. One final thing, I would have loved to have a ping meter that shows up before accepting and refusing matches. Kind of like what KOF 15 recently implemented, which has helped me cut down on having much, much less laggy matches. Because in my review of the previous DNF Dual Beta, I couldn't recall one bad match that I had in terms of connection. This one had so many. So many that I think could have been avoided if I could have seen the ping before accepting or refusing the match, which I'm pretty sure once again, that'll be taken care of. Now, let me talk a little bit about Ghostblade. If you didn't see my initial reaction to his trailer or to hear my opinion about the character, I love this character's design. I love his look. His playstyle is nuts. I'm not saying he's busted or broken, but boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> He is quite a toughie to fight against. 
I got much more familiar with his gameplay when I tried him out a couple of times, and then I felt silly for never really putting pressure on him like I should because Ghostblade seems to be more of a best defense is a good offense type of character. Heavily overwhelming offense, but little to no defense whatsoever. Overall, still love his design, playstyle is cool, but fighting against him was a pain. I probably would have figured him out a little bit quicker, if not for the very thing that I'm about to segue into, which was one of the biggest talking points when it came to DNF Duel Open Beta 2, no training mode. Now, fully hear me out here because I've seen people elsewhere talking about this and certain folks seem to have selective hearing because I'm a little bit in the center when it comes to the whole training mode thing. Now, did the lack of a training mode ruin my experience for the beta? The answer is no. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I grew up in the arcades in the 90s. I played at my first arcade booth at the age of five. I didn't know what I was doing then, and I feel like that's why it didn't really ruin the experience for me personally. It felt nostalgic learning stuff on the fly, learning combos and such, and actually landing them. Furthermore, earlier on when I was talking about the many random disconnects, one of several focuses of this beta was to be on netcode and servers. Straight up. There is no denying this fact. If that wasn't the case, they would have thrown us an offline demo like Omen Asaro did. With that being said, am I saying all this to justify why there shouldn't have been a training mode in the beta? And the answer is no. While it didn't ruin my experience personally, I still feel there should have been a training mode in this beta, and I have two big reasons as to why. First of all, loads of people have been asking for it with the first beta, and surely people continue to let the company know even after the first beta had ended, like you know when they put out their post saying, hey, what did y'all like about the beta? What didn't you like about the beta? People let them know. Putting out a second beta some months afterward and not putting in a tutorial or training mode, especially when it's not gonna spoil anything, like it's not the story mode people wanted, it's just wanting to know how to actually play the game. It comes off a little tone deaf if you ask me. My second point is more of an opinion on my part. I'm not sure how popular of opinion it might be and I don't quite care. I feel if your fighting game is new, you should have some semblance of a tutorial or training mode in your beta, period. I don't care how easy or hard the game is to pick up, if it's new, you need a tutorial or a training mode, and I mean a hands-on tutorial, because while it was a cool thing for them to put out these PDFs with the move list and these videos explaining the mechanics, a lot of people are hands-on learners. That's one thing that I can't stand about people telling folks, get good, get good, get good. All right, man, let me talk to you. I know at least one of my subscribers is an instructor by profession. Whether you are a school teacher, whether you teach martial arts, or if you're a supervisor, any type of job, career, or role that has involved you having to teach somebody else something, you should know that people learn in various different ways. Some people are visual learners, some people are hands-on. Some pick up certain things quickly, other people take baby steps. And when it comes to fighting games, you have people that learn better under pressure, whether it's mid-match, on the fly, having somebody backseat them viciously, and you have those that learn in silence, slowly, in training mode. What is wrong with that? I don't get it. I really don't get it. And I don't want to hear any of this crap about, oh, these people want everything handed to them. And like, oh, Lotus, you said you learned on the fly. Why can't they do it? Shut up with that mess, man. I talked about this mildly in my biking video, and I don't want to get back to this, but it seems like I have to. Some of y'all that push and proliferate this mindset, this mentality, are also some of the same people that whine the loudest about, why doesn't anybody want to play this fighting game? Why doesn't anybody want to play? Part of the reason is because of people like you. There were a lot of people who were casual players that picked up that beta and played it. And in certain cases, yeah, everybody gets upset about losing and all of that then. Losing back to back is never fun, but it's going to happen. But actually sitting down and talking to some of these players then when you take all the actual crybabies out or whatever, there are people where it's less about losing and less about feeling lost. And when people feel lost with something, especially a game, in most cases, they're gonna put it down and go to something else. 
And I mean permanently, not like in the way that you think casuals normally do it. Like, no, it's not just putting it down and getting back to it within a month or two. They're putting it down and they're never picking it back up. They'll probably sell it back and get their money. Rizzy said it best, man. A lot of the same people that want these games to blow up are some of the same folks that basically don't want everybody to play. That makes no sense. Either you want people to play the game or not. There is no in between. And to close this off, the messed up part about this is there was an easy compromise when it came to the whole matter of no training mode and just having a bunch of online play. They could have put an online training mode in there. Those of you who have watched my KOF 15 stream see that I love to be in training mode while waiting to queue up for matches, to warm up and get ready to compete against people online. I like doing that. Why couldn't they have put that in here? You could have had friends in training mode learning the game together and all that. And on top of that, you could have fine tuned and test out an online training mode. That would have been dope. Like, I just wish this community just learned to have a little bit more nuance. And that's myself included. There's no holier than thou mess with here. I got stuff I gotta work on too. And I'm sorry if it seemed like this video was going down a heated path, but the whole training mode thing was too big of a point to ignore. And I think it would be dishonest if I ignored it just because my experience. DNF Duel is not just made for Chris Lotus. It's made for myself and other players. But yeah, all in all, the beta was fun without the little hiccups and everything. And I'm still looking forward to it. I'm confident a good portion of these issues are going to be ironed out by the time the game comes out. But yeah, as much as I want to end this on a more positive note, I got to give the DNF Duel Open Beta 2 the same grade I gave it last time a B minus. But that's all I got for this. Drop a comment and let me know what you think of DNF Duel's open beta 2. Are you still hyped for it? Or are you not? And until next time, this is Chris Alid signing off. You all take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. Be cool to each other. Jumanji.